Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're at out there on this fine Wednesday, 11.06 a.m. California time. It is October 23rd, 2024, the date today. Uh, latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 0.7 here across the area of Nevada. It looks like a little, little small microquake. Some larger movement sneaking in here off the coast of the uh, Russia area just a couple hours ago. Let's go ahead and check that out first, see what we got going on here across the uh, center portion of the Kuril Kamchatka Trench. This is an area I've been watching here for a little while. We've seen uh, a lot of deep activity here recently up and down the board, further inland away from the uh, subduction zone locked area. And uh, I firmly feel this area is capable of producing and probably built up uh, enough for a mega quake out here in terms of magnitude 7.5 and above. Uh, so we got to watch this area. Little earthquake today. I say little because that uh, this trench zone is very capable of producing something much bigger than that. 30 miles deep for the latest quake there in this area, 6.2. Now, California area got uh, some movement north here of the Los Angeles area today. A couple of smaller earthquakes coming into the region there. Fillmore, 2.0 and a 1.6. Uh, I don't think we've seen anything above 2.5 yet. A uh, couple days since we've seen anything uh, of that magnitude and above. So mostly microquake activity out here today. No major intense warming going on. Just getting uh, some movement there north and some older activity here from yesterday in a couple different regions around Los Angeles. Uh, further up north here, got Nevada rocking and rolling out here around the Sheldon area. Now this is kind of interesting here because few years back I went out here and investigated what was going on with an earthquake swarm that was taking place we had hundreds of earthquakes striking out here uh, so I took a little trip out there I think it was back in 2000 uh, maybe 2016 2017 maybe maybe a little bit later I can't remember exactly but uh, there's a lot of volca older volcanic activity out here and I uh, feel that was uh Part of the ongoing swarm that was going on there due to um, the stress that's underneath this area in terms of plate stress. Uh, that died down for a couple years. Now it looks like we're starting to get a little bit further activity out here. A little separate swarm near the um, this little lake. I don't know if there's even going to be a lake out there right now. But uh, yeah, a little bit of movement. Nine earthquakes. Nothing big. It looks like the largest magnitude is going to be this 2.9 within that swarming area. Pacific Northwest, really nothing major going on. Montana area has been quite active out here recently with a little bit of movement taking place. Nothing above 2.5. Yellowstone National Park, nothing going on there. So let's just double check, make sure we have the latest map up, of which we do, the 23rd. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot going on. Looks like maybe a couple smaller spikes here near Maple Creek. That's gonna be these couple small earthquakes there really nothing big going on there the rest of the country uh, about the same although we're noticing a little bit of increasing movement here stretching away from the Pecos Texas area towards Midland area Odessa Big Spring a lot of oil fields out here goodness and uh, that's where these earthquakes are striking out uh, out here today out in the oil fields there's quite a bit of them you have to zoom in to see what they really are and those are um, Lots of oil fields out there. Goodness. So that's ongoing today. Probably expect that to pick up. Looks like migrating further deeper into the heart of Texas. Uh, Appalachian Mountains here. A couple smaller earthquakes from yesterday. Really nothing big going on. And um, let's see what we got for the worldwide activity out here. A little 3.1 in Australia. Looks like the crunch zone still active today, although not quite as much as yesterday. Uh, that's going to be this area between the uh, Java Trench and the Philippines area. A lot of quakes there from yesterday. And there's a handful from today, some threes it looks like in the area. Uh, but our big picture obviously got uh, that 6.2 up here across the Kuril Kamchatka. We'll watch that. Really no uh, aftershock activity up there following that quake. Movement kicking up here across the South America area. Bunch of three stirring up out there. And same for the Middle America Trench. 
Alaska pretty quiet for the most part. Way up north, got uh, just a little bit of movement across the Cook Inlet area. Nothing big. 2.5 map and above pretty much removes all the quakes aside from a couple there from uh, yesterday and today. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, Let's see what we have out here. Really nothing major going on. One earthquake up here outside of Iceland. Uh, but aside from that, hey, it looks like a uh, looks like a typical day on this planet. Quiet zones out here across the area for now in the um, Vanuatu area, Solomon Islands, um, Fiji, Tonga, all the way down to New Zealand. That's awfully rare to see this go super quiet like this. And it shouldn't stay quiet uh, for too much longer. We, we have had a number of quakes there in the last week, as you can see, quite a bit of deep activity. That has halted. Uh, the last earthquake, in fact, was a 5.5 there from yesterday, uh, a deep earthquake into the area. So that tells me right there things are um, pretty much on edge here for some surface adjustment somewhere around the area. Uh, the question is where that may be. So we'll have to keep an eye on that for some larger scale activity out there. Space weather movement, uh, well, let's see if we can see that sunspot area out there on the eastern limb. This, uh, man, it's taking its time getting over here. Let's see what we got for complexity. There's a couple different active areas out here on the far southeastern limb of the sun we're watching. This one here is a uh, massive coverage area, and it's... Uh, it's flaring, but not anything significant yet. It's got a lot of background noise in terms of flaring potential. Uh, so we'll keep, continue to keep an eye on this area here. Definitely of some noteworthy value in the days ahead. Unnamed yet. There's 3868, but more than likely this is going to be a, a newly named sunspot anytime now. Just waiting on the space weather prediction folks or whoever names this um, these sunspots here to uh, put, a, put a tag on it. But we'll continue to watch that as it comes around. No major flare threats right now. Uh, we notice a little bit of instability here. Getting that popcorn activity there on the solar flare chart. That's indicative there of some complexity going on within, within those sunspots. And in fact, we've raised up the uh, flare threat a little bit to 10% chance. M flare at 60. C flare around 99% chance. So things are on the uptick, and I have a feeling that will increase throughout the day, the days ahead. Nothing major going on in the Aurora department for now, folks. Uh, Storm Prediction Center out here, really nothing of any significant value right now. Day two, this is going to be for the day on uh, Thursday. Shows a, a slight chance for some severe weather up here, Mi actually a marginal risk. Uh, really nothing for tornado or wind. It looks like maybe some hail. Out there across the area, uh, Iowa, Missouri area, and uh, portions of Kansas and Nebraska it looks like there. So really nothing major in the forecast so for severe weather. As we put the model runs here in, in uh, forecasted models, California here getting some rain and some cooler temperatures. As we close out the month of October, I'm ready for it. Uh, that looks to linger around for a little bit. Bring some snow out here into the Intermountain West areas. Got uh, some tropical disturbances down there in the Gulf of Mexico. We're going to have to watch here, folks. This model today looks a little bit more frightening uh, for a major hurricane here in the Gulf of Mexico. Pretty much taking the same path as, uh, ooh, is that Helene? that uh, came up here and created all that devastation out here across the Carolinas and flooding. That, uh, let's hope this changes here. But each model run is showing something forming down here off the coast of Florida. Last night, it showed uh, almost what looked like two hurricanes down here, but disorganized. Today, one well-defined strong hurricane hitting the area as we head into the week of November. First, first week of November. Again, this is a ways out, though. So these models are going to change. But the thing is, I like to check these because they can pick up on uh, something at a, at a distance. You know, in terms of what may be going on a couple weeks down the road here. And it's really not... I mean, what do we got here? 
Yeah, we got about a couple weeks here till we know a little bit more. November 3rd should give us a good idea of what's forming down there and where the patterns are and what uh, potential model could be more accurate in terms of that tropical system. But right now the GFS pointing, painting a uh, not a good scenario for that area. These guys don't need any more uh, devastating activity. And that's all dependent on where this jet stream is. You can kind of see that colder air rushing down here into the plains, Colorado area. Uh, if this is further out or closer to this hurricane, that could steer it and keep it away from this area. But we're going to have to watch that. We'll keep checking back on it. Uh, either way, it's something, it's definitely something to watch here, folks. Colder temperatures and snow, wintertime like temperatures out here in California. I'm, I'm ready for it. I think I asked for it, so it's coming. We got some cooler temperatures, well below average, coming in as we head into the month of November. And it uh, looks good. Looks good. Uh, I know a lot of folks not liking the heat dome out there across uh, the eastern portion of the country. Northeast, I would say. It's, uh, looks like it wants to hang around your guys' area. Little clippers coming in with some cooler weather on occasion there. Giving you a little taste of fall and winter. But, uh, man, look at that massive high pressure here in the northern plains. Goodness, that is well above average temperatures there for that area. The good thing is it's not sticking around in one location. We're getting a various amount of mixing here with all the highs and the lows and the pressure differences out here. So that will keep things not quite as stale in terms of if you're not a big fan of the cold or not a big fan of the, the warmer conditions here. It looks like it changes here quite often. But, hey, look at that. California getting in on the taste of winter as well. All right, uh, <clears throat> nothing major going on in here at Hawaii yet, although, wow, this looks a little bit different than last night. Got a little bit of swarming going on here across the area of the Middle East Rift Zone, about a mile or two below the surface. We better double check that, see what's going on there for Hawaii. I'm good, USGS. I'll take your survey a little bit later. Um, currently at a yellow and advisory. That's the level it's been out, been at here for a little while since the most recent eruption there back in the uh, uh, September time frame. Had a small little fissure open up, a couple of them open up there in the Middle East Rift Zone. As uh, far as today's activity, seismograph stations there looking a little bit more active. Um, got a handful of earthquakes out there in the area. Let's see if we can spot this uh, tilt meter out here. I wish we had a little bit more tilt meter stations out here. It would be beneficial. I'm not seeing anything of any major value. And if you look at the deformation data here at the summit in Upper East Rift Zone, this here, that doesn't look natural to me. This looks like some type of manual adjustment or some modification going on here that causes it to go down, causes it to go back up. The trend here, the trend line should be consistent. And we're not seeing any, you know, any major earthquake activity that would lead me to believe that these are ups and downs underneath the surface of the area here. This looks like uh, some malfunction of the, of the station. And in fact, if you look on the uh, past week it, as well, it's just consistently nothing going on. Ever since the 10th of October, looks like we've lost data out there. And it's just flatlined. And I know that's not the case. There's going to be fluctuations always across the volcano. But something's going on here that doesn't look right in terms of the accuracy of the data coming in there. Uh, so I'm not for sure what we can do about that. But just got to watch the seismograph stations here because earthquake activity is going to be key. Actually, that looks fairly amplified. <clears throat> Those are indeed little earthquakes. I know how to read a seismograph station. I look at these things 24-7 for many years, and that's a lot of earthquake activity, fracturing, so to speak, of the, of the land, the crust here. More east of the area, a little bit east of the most recent eruption there back in September. So I think what's going on here is uh, that migration of magma that we've witnessed here over the past few months 
that magma intrusion slowly drifting off here towards the lower lower east rift zone there was enough pressure and enough weak points here at the surface to see a uh, some fissure activity here but i guarantee you that little fissure event that only lasted for a short period did not uh, completely drain the area of magma this right here tells me so uh, getting a lot of earthquake activity more east here away from uh, our most recent fissure activity back in September. So it looks like things may be advancing further out here across this region. Let's see what we got for tilt meter here. A little bit of movement, but it's hard to say if these are going to be dependable in accuracy because of the uh, other stations showing errors. Let's see, I'm trying to get to this seismograph station here. So this one's showing activity as well, but not quite as intense as this region. So it looks like the, most of the magma area is probably right here trying to work its way down uh, further east. Because that's a lot of activity. If, if you count these, there's probably um, close to 100 earthquakes or more in this seismograph station alone. And that's the past 12 hours. Uh, past 24 hours in there as well. You can see quite a bit of uh, earthquake activity indicating pressure building up here in this area and that's east of where our most recent uh, fissure event took place so I don't think we're over yet little pause but I'd like to know what's going on here with the uh, deformation data out there something's not working properly all right uh, let's get out of here see what else we got real quick glance here at California nothing new there yet and uh, as you can see, just kind of a looks like any given day out here across California for now. But remember, the past couple months, we've seen amplified conditions out here on a broad scale. Pretty much draw a line. Western Nevada stretching over to the Garlock Fault Shear Zone and then down. Kind of like a, a zigzag pattern. And it almost follows the, the plate tectonics out here. There's a plate boundary, major fault zone this way. And then you got the Walker Lane area that sits up here to the east. You know, there was a lot of stress built up here, and we witnessed some earthquake swarms in various locations that have not seen increased earthquake activity here in the last couple years, last uh, couple decades, I should say. Uh, so things are, you know, quiet for now, but uh, don't let that little quiet period fool you. Last 30 days of earthquake activity out here across the uh, southern portion of the state. <clears throat> Shows uh, about 1,410 earthquakes of various magnitudes with the largest here. Uh, that's going to be that four-pointer out here across the Avenal area. 4.0 down in Ontario. You know, we, that's just the last 30 days. The last two months here have been increased in seismicity out here. So there's definitely a pattern going on. And it's leading to, I feel, the San Andreas Fault here. So we'll continue to watch that, folks. I'll be off here on the side. I do have, I don't know, I picked up something here from Missy Mimi's. I think she got it from the kids. And just hand, it's like a hand-me-down cold. And uh, it is definitely affecting my voice here. So I'm trying to stock up on vitamin C and uh, drinking plenty of fluids here to keep keep this from getting worse. But it's uh, it's got a hold of me right now. So uh, if you guys got any ideas of maybe... Uh, some home remedies here. I, I do have some raw honey, some lemon. I make myself a little tea, which helps out a lot on the sore throat. But uh, goodness, I, I need some uh, need some home remedies if you guys have it in terms of maybe what I can make up to help kick this, whatever it is. I'm not really a doctor fan. I don't go to the doctor unless it's like an emergency. So... I just got to figure out something here to kind of kick this out. All right, I'm out of here. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on today. Take care, folks.